Welcome everybody to another edition of Kevin's Commentary. Today we have as our special guest, the guy who uh, is in a spring sport, no doubt about it, but has a lot of indoor events. We're talking with Dean Clower, the head tennis coach at the University of Wyoming. Dean, already in your fourth year, it's amazing how it goes by, but you have built quite a program here uh, at the University of Wyoming. And uh, I want you to talk a little bit about what this indoor complex has meant to you and, and how this program has come to where it is now. The program has taken a while to get where it's at, but every year I feel like we've taken little steps forward, little steps forward. And uh, now I feel like the recruiting pool is starting to open up more for us. And that's a kudos to the athletes that have been here before. You know, a lot of times we talk to the freshmen each year about where they are and how they got here and then the people that were there before and and it's kind of like they deserve the respect to the people who built this program and it's not the coaches it's not the facility it's not everything around it's those kids that were here before it's the Sasha Nimsovas, the Alexander Kovacs, the <clears throat> Simona Sinkovas, the Veronica Popovich those type of athletes that when they got here as athletes there was only two indoor courts and they grew and they grew and they got better and they got better and they said we are Wyoming we don't care who you are in this country we will play you and beat you on any given day and uh, that's how they started that motto six years ago when they came and um, I think now it's up to the girls and the team to respect that and respect where they came from and this is who Wyoming is it's not now it's what we've been and what we're gonna be and um, yeah that's how we got to where we are now. You know, you mentioned those great names, and they've been uh, some of the greatest names Wyoming tennis has ever had. Uh, certainly, uh, those, those young ladies are, are, have been recruited uh, from foreign lands. Uh, how did you get involved in recruiting overseas? When I was coaching men's tennis, I was recruiting overseas a lot. And with Sasha and Simi, actually, my former colleague, when I was in Texas coaching men, I was helping him get male athletes and he said he said hey I was just in Slovakia um, this guy I used to coach has a couple girls you should look at him and so fly over there you, you see him hit for about 10 minutes and you're like yeah we got a scholarship for you you guys want to come and they're like does it snow yeah you guys have mountains yeah well they want to come because they're both snowboarders and Sasha or actually Simi was actually in a cast because she got in a snowboarding accident and I thought those are the type of kids we want here in Laramie we want the kids that like it here, they like the cold weather, they like the snow, and a little rough around the edges. They maybe have a little wild side on the mountain or on the court, but that's, that's who we want. Is that a different style of tennis uh, when you bring them to this country? Do you have some work to do there, or, or is it very similar? Absolutely, it's, they play on clay. And so it's much different, it's much slower, but you can look at the kid and say, okay, could you develop their game on hard court, or is it not able to do it? And, with the Veras and the Simis and the Sashas and the Sandys, it's you have they have all the tools. It just they had to learn how to play on the hard courts. And yeah, they're freshmen, sophomore year, they took some lumps. But by the time they're junior seniors, I mean, look at their records. They they speak for themselves. Let's talk about this year's team. You've got uh, four seniors. You've got a veteran team. Yet your number one, number two are young kids. Uh, number one right now is a freshman. Number two is a sophomore. Um, I would assume that the veterans are lending a, a lot of experience to this team, but you certainly like your new players. I love the whole team. It's uh, the fre Maggie is a freshman. She'll play one. Dork is a sophomore, and they're kind of kind of full of piss and vinegar. They're they're ready to rock and roll. It's they don't care who they're playing, Texas Tech or Auburn, and you know Maggie's up a, or has chances to go up a set against the girl who's 30 in the country against Texas Tech, and you could tell her that after the match, and she would tell you. So what, I lost, and like, they don't care. They don't care, they're gonna bring it every single day. And uh, I, I like that about those two. They might be freshmen, but they, they have attitudes of, of seniors and, like and older than that. And with the upperclassmen, I absolutely love our seniors. They are true blue Wyoming, blue collar. They'll play anywhere, any given day. They'll play in ice, snow, 110 degree weather, wind, no wind, they'll, they'll bring it. <clears throat> and uh, I think with those upperclassmen kind of helping the younger ones and kind of teaching them, them the Wyoming way and what we want in the program, I'm, I'm really excited. And especially with Jess coming off her ACL injury last year and she's looking better and better every day. And she's still got that fire, that, that fight. And I think she just needs one good win and she's gonna do some damage this year. 
It's always exciting to start the home season. Cowgirls are at home this weekend uh, with Denver and, and Metro. Um, you've had some uh, activity already to start the spring season, but uh, how do you handicap this uh, home weekend, Denver on Friday and Metro on Saturday? Our first focus is Denver. Uh, that's what we've been practicing for all week. It's a big one. Denver is one of the best, is the, is, is the best team in the region. And uh, I think, I think we got a shot. You know, being at home with the girls, the way they, their attitudes are, and we have the best crowd in the country by far. Our crowd is loud, they're raucous, very Wyoming-esque. They travel, they know tennis, and uh, I, you put those two things in, in one element, I think we got a shot just about against anybody in the world. Cal 3, a little tiny curveball. Uh, your wife, Amanda, is uh, an assistant track coach here. So you've got uh, two coaches in the family. How do you handle that? And uh, do you talk a lot at home about coaching? Uh, or are you more just husband and wife uh, at the home fire? My wife is amazing. She is absolutely awesome. Because there's no way that I would be able to do what she does. Because she puts on all the hats. She's mom, she's, hus or she's wife. She's mommy daycare, she's all that, but at the same time, she's got a pretty, pretty strong chin on her. You know, she'll, she'll get into me, she'll get into the girl, to, the, to the, her team, and then come home and do the same thing to the kids, and but at the same time, have that lovingness of the mother. Usually, I just kind of do what I'm told and stay out of the way because she probably runs the roost in that realm. When it comes to coaching, <laughs> you know, like she'll come and tell me about her day, and. When she first started coaching, she'd ask me a little, about, a little bit about recruiting and stuff like that. And now, now we can't talk about coaching because it'll become an argument. Whose style's better? Whose style's more effective? And I grew up with both my parents were coaches, so I understood how it was not healthy having two coaches as parents. So now I've taken the back seat to, I'll just let her do the talking. And if she really wants to know, she'll ask me. And then I still think about what my answer is going to be. <laughs> what would you say your coaching style is? Tough love, I think. You know, I think the girls all know that I'll do anything in the world to make them better on the court, better people, but there is an expectation that they have to bring every single day, and if that expectation is not met, they'll hear about it and there'll be consequences. But at the same time, the girls know that if they have issues going on, I have an open door policy. I've dealt with all kinds of stuff with the girls and, and honestly I like that. I like developing a relationship with the girls. I like hearing about their families and knowing where they came from and what can I do to make them become better people. And I, I take more pride now with the girls that graduated a year ago. They all work, one of them works for CTI in Slovakia, another one works for IBM in, in Slovakia, excuse me, CTI, that's Sunny, that's Hungary. You know, I, I take more pride in what the girls are doing now and how successful they are and that's kind of my coaching philosophy is if you make them better people, they're going to be better players. And in the long run, you'll reap the benefits. Cowgirls finished third last year in, in a, a good tennis conference. Uh, do you feel like they can do better than that this year? Is this uh, maybe a little bit better team than you had last year? We have eight girls that are, it makes the lineup hard because whoever's sitting out should be playing somewhere and much deeper. We're, like we, said, we talked about, we are young at the top, young in our doubles teams. I think we could be better, but the conference is good. You know, there's 10 teams that have a chance to make the NCAA tournament this year. Um, that goes from Air Force to Fresno to San Diego State. To, uh, on the mountain side, New Mexico is probably stronger. Utah State just beat BYU last week. And so it's great as far as RPI concerns because in the conference, you get one good win. It boosts you up RPI-wise, not just in the rankings in Mountain West. But yeah, we, we could finish third, we could finish first, we could finish 10th. It all is going to be a matter of inches. Well, we wish you the best of luck and uh, good luck this weekend in the home opener. I know that'll be exciting for not only a good crowd, but uh, the kids. Oh, the kids are pumped. Thank you. Okay, Dean Clower, head women's tennis coach at the University of Wyoming. Thanks for being with us, Dean. Thank you. Thanks for watching, everyone. Until next time.